Hey guys, we're going to be making some ice cream cone cakes. Some ice cream cone cupcakes. So, um, I'm doing them for my daughter's first birthday. She's also going to have a giant cupcake. But what I'm going to do is make all the starter batters and then go on from there. So, right now what I have is four classic yellow Duncan Hines cake mixes. Two of them are going to be pineapple flavored and two of them are going to be strawberry flavored. So we're going to start off with the pineapple. Now, this is going to be up to you. Um, if you want to just dump two boxes in a, contain in a bowl and put all the ingredients in there, you can. Doubling ingredients is really a science. It's not just putting two of everything into a bowl. So what I'm going to do is just make... Um, the two separately and then combine it because I don't know the science of it and I don't really have time to practice and test it out. So the easiest way is for me to completely do one box and then another box and then put them in the same bowl. So for the pineapple cake, I already have dumped out one bowl, one box of cake mix. What I did was in my food processor, I ground it up and, and strained it. So you should get about about a cup and a half of pineapple puree. Make sure you reserve the liquid. And this is about, you're gonna get about, uh, almost two and a half cups of liquid from the pineapple and also straining it. And see, I have a little bit of liquid left in here, so I'm gonna just get that over. You want to get the pineapple puree or your crushed pineapples as dry as possible because you don't want the cake too too soft you don't want too much liquid in it because then it'll be way too moist and it, oh having a cake too moist is not always the best thing especially for this type of recipe because this is going to be a giant cupcake if it's too moist it won't stand up to the weight now if you're doing just a plain sheet cake then you could put a little bit more moisture in it or not have the pineapple as dry because it's a sheet cake with no weight on top of it but two 15 ounce cans of pineapple chunks pureed make sure you reserve the juice and you strain the pineapple as best as you can and i already have my eggs have already been sitting out um coming to room temperature um, it's going to be 12 eggs for all four boxes, but I'm just going to show you one box for right now. So, hold on and let's see. Now first, I'm going to put about two-thirds cup of the pineapple puree in here. About two-thirds of a cup. And instead of water, because the recipe calls for one cup of water, this is why we reserve the pineapple juice, I'm going to use one cup of pineapple juice. So there's no water the in this recipe. The pineapple juice is going to replace the water. And then three eggs. Now you really ought to crack your eggs over another container. I, I never do. That's just my own personal thing. You know, one day I'll probably learn my lesson when I get a bad egg. And then a third of a cup of vegetable oil. I'm using canola oil. You can definitely use canola oil. You can even use olive oil. The only difference being if you do one of those other oils, especially olive oil, you may have a little bit of another flavor inside your cake. But I've made cakes with olive oil before and it's not a problem. You want to mix this all up. And try not to over mix it. So I'm gonna throw it, turn it up really high and just get a really good batter. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and mixed both of the cake batters together. The second cake batter I did, you put more pineapple in it, so I used a little bit more than two thirds of a cup. And I have 
about a little less than half a cup of pineapple juice left. I'm just going to go down and dump that into the big container and mix that in because um, I wanted a more pineapple flavor. And when I put it in the second batter, that second batter was more, had a more pineapple flavor. So it's only a half a cup of extra liquid. A little, actually a little less than half a cup. Um, not, I couldn't really see how much that was just then. But if you, like I said, get the pineapple chunks and grate them up or mince them up in your food processor after you've drained the liquid from the can and you've strained the pineapple, the uh, minced pineapple, you should have about two and a half cups of pineapple juice. You should. Now, I did strain and strain and strain a lot. So, um, if you don't have two and a half cups of pineapple juice, you don't really need it. You can always add a little bit of water. You may not have a really strong pineapple flavor. Or if you have some pineapple juice around. Or even maybe some apple juice. So, what I'm going to do now is go on and set up my cupcakes. I mean, my ice cream cones in a in a what is it called? In a cupcake pan, my oven is already preheating to 350 degrees and I'm gonna transfer some of this into my measuring cup so that it's easier for me to pour. Okay guys, so I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So what I, um, I went ahead and I filled my mini cupcake pan with 12 ice cream cones and I used a mini cupcake pan because the bottoms of these are pretty small and you could use a full size cupcake pan but the mini works better because it's such a small opening it kind of makes all the cupcakes snug um and I put it on a baking sheet baking sheet only because this is a silicone mat so what you want to do is fill your ice cream cones about two-thirds of the way up I'm going to put a little bit more um, cake batter in this one. You don't want to overfill it because if you oh, you need to give it a little bit of room to rise. If you overfill it, it, it may break or it may puff up too much. Okay guys, so I have all of my um, ice cream cones filled and what you're going to do is follow the baking instructions for cupcakes. So uh, like I said, my oven is already, has been preheated to th uh, 350 degrees. And now I'm going to bake the cupcakes for 18 okay, to 20 minutes. Okay, guys, so my ice cream cones baked for about, I'm going to say about 35 minutes. I baked them a little bit longer because they seem to be a little wet inside. And I don't mind that some of them are a little browner on top, only because they're going to be covered up with frosting. This one over here, I did feel too much, so you see it bubbled over. What I'm going to do right now is go ahead on and put these guys on my table and let them thoroughly cool. Okay, you guys, so this cake is going to be the strawberry cake. Now, this particular recipe I got from, let's see if you can see it, allrecipes.com. I really like this website because you can change the serving size which is, is really good. Like for me, I needed to use two boxes of cake mix. So instead of 12 servings, I just went ahead and I changed it to um, 24 servings. So it gave me the measurements of what you were actually supposed to use for making it a little bit larger. So first things first, um, we're going to go through the ingredients. We have a cup of water, one and one third cup of vegetable oil, one fourth cup plus two tablespoons of all purpose flour, two boxes of yellow cake mix, Duncan Hines or any brand you choose. The recipe actually calls for six ounces of strawberry gelatin. I have one three ounce box. Wait a minute. No. I have 2.3 ounce boxes, so I'm not going to go to the store to buy a larger box. I'm just going to add more strawberry puree, but I'll get to that in a minute. Eight 
eggs at room temperature. Make sure whenever you are baking, you have your eggs at room temperature. They just combine a lot easier. And the recipe calls for two 10 ounce bags of, I think it's two, let me look. Yeah, two 10 ounce bags of frozen strawberries. I did not have any frozen strawberries, but I did have um, fresh strawberries. So all I did was I used a pint and a half and I had a 16 ounce pint. Um, so it ended up being about 24 ounces of strawberries that I used and I ground them up. So we will get to combining. You're just going to go ahead on and combine all of these ingredients. You're going to combine half of the strawberry mixture because the other half is going to be reserved for your icing okay guys so first thing we're going to do have my little whisk here we're going to go ahead on and open up our boxes of gelatin and now you can definitely do a different flavor um, if you weren't making strawberry, you could put ras do raspberry gelatin and fresh raspberries. I mean, you could play around with this in so many different ways. You know, you really think outside the box. So I'm going to go down and add my strawberry gelatin in as well as my flour. And get that all combined. So it's all through there, the gelatin and the flour is really incorporated nice. And like I said, I love allrecipes.com. There's so many different recipes in there, so many good helpful tips, so many really good reviews. Um, this cake, um, I'm going to put a link at the bottom, but this is strawberry cake and frosting one and I really liked all the reviews. Nobody changed anything when I read the review. This recipe is one of those recipes that came out really good all from the very beginning. So people did not have to make changes. Because you'll see some recipes where they may be rated well, but people made a lot of changes to them. And I like it when it's more so a recipe that you don't have to make changes to. Okay, so now we're just going to make a little well and... We're going to add in our water, our oil, and all of our eggs. And I wish you guys could smell this. This cake already smells so so good I mean so good and I'm just gonna go ahead on and give it a quick scrape down make sure all of see because you have cake batter down at that bottom that hasn't gotten in there so you really want to make sure you take it down I've whipped out the big girl spatula now and now you want to add about half of your container of fresh strawberries in here and now I feel like this cake mix is just a little thick, so I'm going to add about a half a cup more water. That's just me. If you want to follow what the recipe tells you, go right ahead. So now I'm going to go ahead on and transfer it into something that's a little easier to manage. And I'll fill up my cones and I'll be back in a second. So here go the strawberry cupcake cones. I've gone ahead and taken them out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead on and let them cool and put my next batch in and we'll come back when they're iced. 